where we are helping you get relevant, practical information you can apply in your business today. Two weeks ago, we had Derek Roberts with Edward Jones talking about strategic retirement options for business owners and talking about the coming Cal Saver requirements for uh, um, for businesses and employers. So if you did miss that workshop, please check it out on our YouTube channel. Uh, and if you're attending live, you will get a link to that in the follow up email. Today we have Blake Maxwell with Maxwell Insurance Agency. Blake is an employee benefits and HR technology expert, and he loves helping employers win by eliminating soft dollar HR administration costs. Thank you for joining us, Blake. Thanks a lot, Anna. It's great. This is a really cool platform. I wish, uh, you know, more small businesses would get together like this because it's a cool way to learn about each other, uh, each other's strengths. I love it. Well, speaking of learning about each other, um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about you and, and your company? All right. Well, yeah. So my name is Blake Maxwell. I'm the founder of the Maxwell Agency Insurance, insurance Services. And, uh, you know, I just grew up loving insurance from day one, you know, basically came out of the womb at two years old and went, I'm going to be in insurance. Um, which I think we can all safely assume is not the case there. But um, yeah, basically local Southern California raised, went to school at UCI, pretty much graduated college in an environment that uh, things were tanking and um, basically fell into insurance. I think like a lot of people do, spent time on the carrier side, the broker side, and then started my own brokerage a few years ago, focusing on employee benefits. Love it. Um, so when do you think employers start actually thinking about insurance benefits? I mean, I, I really think that insurance benefits, specifically on the health insurance side, is probably one of the uh, the first things that come up. Because a lot of us, I think, Anna, that we can definitely both relate to this, being entrepreneurs. In the beginning, when you uh, take that leap of faith and, and start whatever your passion project or organization is, um, one of the major things that come to you know front of your mind is like, man, you know, I work for a Fortune 500 company that provides me this great benefit package. Now I want to go and start a crew or a Maxwell agency to serve all of our, you know, all of these awesome clients that we're going to hopefully go out and look for. But we go, what do I do for insurance? I know that it's important. I have to have these things. So from day one, I think uh, it's something that people think about. A lot of employers, when, when they break off and kind of uh, are in that formation stage, they look towards individual type insurance programs, which, uh, you know, are available through Cover California. And then, you know, once they get their, their baby off the ground and like things are going and they're gaining clients and things are going great, they quickly realize that in order to attract the best and brightest talent in their industry, they need to offer a well-rounded benefits package to, uh, to encourage those employees to make the jump. And um, so we are there to assist those employers, not only by like identifying and implementing, but also by implementing technology solutions that makes it, makes it easy for them to, uh, to do so. Yeah, that's such a good point. It's um, it's easy to kind of forget that as you're growing out your own practice, that if you want to attract great people, you need to make sure that they want to be there and that they have the benefits that they need so that their needs are met as well. Um, so what do you think a business owner should be considering when they're looking at benefit plans? Yeah, I mean, so I mean, if they're really in that rollout stage, I mean, so their team's growing, they're looking to attract and retain those great employees. Um, there's a few things that they want to start thinking about. Uh, the the benefits landscape has, has really changed quite significantly over the past, you know, five years. Um, historically, it was rather difficult to get a plan off the ground because of what are called participation requirements, in which case the carriers were requiring a, a very high threshold of participation in order to get a plan issued. Historically, it was around 70% participation, which uh, would make it difficult to, to start a plan with a low contribution level. That being said, now in the post-Affordable Care Act environment, things have gotten a lot easier. So that hurdle as far as sponsoring 100% of the cost isn't there anymore. We, we have the ability now to issue plans with no participation requirements. So you know, a lot of employers, if they're interested, bottom line, in setting up a group benefit package, you could set up a plan with a minimum of $100 a month contribution. It's not something that has to break the bank necessarily right, right away. Because I think as we all can you know, agree, when you're in that startup phase, every dollar counts. And so we definitely don't want to be biting off more than we can chew, even if it's for a good thing. Um, so that, that's kind of what I, would, what I would leave with as far as what I would think of, thinking about in the beginning. Totally. Um, so I know a little bit about this uh, from my own experience, but I would love for you to share a little bit about how you guys leverage technology uh, for your business owner clients. Total dork. 
total dork. I pretty much love all things insurance. Every no, all things technology. Um, insurance is cool and it's great and has its place. And I think we can all agree that it's important. But to me, insurance is a little boring. Don't tell anybody, but that's the fact. But what is really, really cool is being able to implement these technology solutions into small businesses just like ours and show them how they can maximize efficiency right away from day one. Um, you know, starting with things as simple as benefits enrollment or that open enrollment experience. I think most people in, uh, you know, smaller industries, their eyes start to roll in the back of their head right away because they're like, oh, great. Someone's going to get up. They're going to talk about the insurance. They're going to hand me an encyclopedia stack of paperwork and they're going to tell me to fill it out. Then they're going to come back and tell me I'm missing information. And so what we've done at Maxwell Agency is just really found awesome technology that we can help our clients eliminate a lot of those soft dollar costs. So like for open enrollment, for instance, rather than handing you a stack of papers and saying, here you go, wouldn't it be easier if we could export all of the information out of payroll into a benefits enrollment system so the employees are just reviewing that their address is correct rather than having to fill out the form, signing electronically, be able to see their deductions from their paycheck in real time versus having to like, my birthday was October 2nd, and then three days later, they get the rate sheet back. So things like that, I'm very passionate about. In addition to that, our technology solutions so it streamlines that benefit open enrollment portion, but we can also help employers really make meaningful savings in their onboarding functionality. So when I say onboarding, things like I-9s, W-4s, emergency contact information, our system has the ability to collect all that information during the new hire process. In addition, it can handle offer letters, which can be rejected or, or, rejected or accepted by the prospective employee. Um, and they can, the employee can actually go through all the required documentation from like employee manuals, policies and procedures, maybe an NDA, things like that. And I find that, you know, by implementing technology solutions like the onboarding functionality, the benefits enrollment functionality, what you're doing is you're allowing, you know, employers or really the employees of employers, for instance, uh, to really focus on higher priority issues. You know, if you have Blake, that's the off front office manager for a 50 person company, He's probably wearing a lot of hats. He's got a lot of things going on. And so if we can find ways to allow Blake to focus on something more important by digitizing the new hire onboarding benefits enrollment functions, well, now that frees up a lot of time for him to do something else. Um, furthermore, we also have the ability to uh, handle HRIS functionality within our system. So the HRIS functionality would be like performance review tracking um, and things of that nature. In addition to that, we have some really cool technology like learning management systems will be deployed to our clients, uh, some basic HR services, some compliance services like SPD and RAP documents, which we could talk a lot about. But at the end of the day, really what we're trying to do is that none of these things cost the client any direct money. So full disclosure, you know, we are paid commission by the insurance carrier every month. So when the client pays, we get paid. And so what Maxwell Agency is really trying to deliver is a full suite of tools, resources, and expertise to provide that return on investment for our clients every month. Um, and so that's kind of one of the few ways that we uh, try and do it there. Yeah, that is something I totally love about your guys' business model is those it, those systems are expensive, especially if you are, you know, a business owner, maybe you just have a handful of employees and you want to do things well, but the, you know, HRIS systems or, um, you know, paperless onboarding, like all of those kinds of things can get really pricey. And the fact that you guys just include it just to work with you and, and take some of those pain points away is something that is, is really awesome. I like it a lot. Um, so you mentioned a few of the benefits, uh, you know, in mm -hmm. saving that, that person time and kind of um, saving that business hopefully some time in that onboarding. What are some of the other benefits for like that technology? I know you briefly mentioned like a learning management system. Mm -hmm. Like what are some of the things that you are hearing from clients that they're liking about the technology you guys use? Yeah, I mean, so it really like for us, so like we kind of touched on the new hire onboarding functionality, which I think we can all agree saves time. We talked about the benefits enrollment. We talked about the HRS functionality, but like I said, if we're getting paid monthly, I should be trying to deliver 12 months a year of a value back to our clients so they can really look at their return on investment and understand what they're receiving. So what we did is we took it a step further besides this basic, you know, new hire onboarding benefits technology. We offer that full learning management system that you uh, mentioned there. That's become extremely prevalent these days because uh, as most California employers know, if you have five or more employees, you're required to conduct sexual harassment training for employers and managers by the end of this year. Uh, it was one of those things that we were getting asked quite a lot about. 
And so we made the investment in a learning management system for our clients. So what that means to them is that an employer, if you have two employers or 200 employers or, or 200 employees or 2000 employees, you have a full suite of over 300 courses that you can deploy to your employee population in regards to training. So the training, they go through it, they you know take a quiz at the end, it prints the certificates. Um, and it's just one of the, a nice value added service that Maxwell Agency provides, especially these days where employers have to do something about the sexual harassment training. But really, you know, there's tons of great information in there. There's things, um, ergonomics training, there's PPE training, there's coronavirus training, there's a whole suite of HR trainings just for if you had that front office manager that's wearing the HR hat now. So you, you have a lot of, uh, you know, great tools and resources within the learning management system. That, uh, that just makes sense for a small business to be able to offer the same value added value add, you know, services for their team members as a large organization. I love In that. addition, it's, yeah. No, it's, it's also it's nice awesome. that the learning management system, like people can log in remotely because totally. you know, most of us are working remotely. So a lot of times, even if, if employers offer training, like they may not have a way to deploy it. But mm -hmm. in a way that we can all access right now. Um, so that is awesome. I'm so sorry you were saying. Oh yeah, no, no, no. And so like all these technology resources, they're great. But one of the things, one investment that we made a few years ago was in addition to having, you know, best in class tools and resources, we figured this is all great, but if people aren't using it, what's the point in spending the money on it? So what we've done is we, we've actually invested in a position within our agency, uh, just doing train or just doing a director of technology position, just to be helping reaching out to our clients to encourage them to use these tools and resources that they already have at their disposal. A, and then B, have somebody or somewhere to turn to when the issues come up. Because as we all know, when we're learning a new system, it might have a million you know, great bells and whistles. But if you don't have somebody to pick up the phone, call or text uh, for an answer, it's not, you know, not really providing a lot of value. So that was a big, uh, big differentiator for us as well. Uh, another pain point that we saw a lot of, you know, a lot of issues with, aside from the learning management system, is with, um, you know, with COBRA. So employers with 20 or more employees are subject to federal COBRA. What Maxwell Agency does to try and provide value surrounding the COBRA uh, world is that we actually have an integration with our online enrollment portal with a third party administrator that handles COBRA. What that means for an employer is that you don't need to worry about COBRA anymore, essentially, because when an employee is terminated from the online enrollment portal, the TPA is automatically notified and those initial COBRA notifications are sent out at that point. So um, that was another you know, kind of nice thing that Maxwell Agency was just trying to eliminate some more pain points there. Um, you know, something that, that I think is, is very beneficial for our clients. That's so awesome. It is all of those kinds of things that can so easily trip you up as a business owner. You're trying to check all the boxes. You're trying to do everything correctly. And, you know, sometimes you just don't even know some of the things you're supposed to do and then actually executing it, especially if you're letting an employee go, there are a lot of things that you're worried totally. about process of letting somebody go. And so making sure they get the COBRA notification is probably not top of mind or part of that. But process. it can, really, yeah, it will be pretty top of the line when the, when the employee's attorney figures it out though, because uh, yes. it's a huge liability, <laughs> so, <laughs> which a lot I mean, of, a lot of employers do not think about. It's, it's just amazing to me. I mean, that leads me to another point. I mean, something else that's, a, you know, aside from the COBRA, something else that we saw, you know, as a major pain point for employers was something that's just as simple as compliance. Um, you know, compliance is tough in this arena. There are a lot of rules and regulations surrounding employee benefit plans. And one of the ways that Maxwell Agency saw a good way to provide some value is to make sure that we don't lose clients because they are not in compliance. Um, so things as simple as Section 125 plans, which you're probably aware, aware, well aware of, which are basically an IRS plan document that allows employers to make pre-tax deductions from their employees' paychecks. Um, and then secondly, summary plan descriptions or SPDs, which is like an encyclopedia of insurance, you know, legalese um, that a lot of employers mistakenly think is the insurance carrier's re responsibility. But when you actually look into the Department of Labor, this is a requirement that the employer has to have put together if they're offering a health and welfare plan. Um, and if they were to go through a Department of Labor, Labor audit and were unable to produce this document, uh, the fines are pretty steep, upwards of $100 per employee per day. So. It's uh, it's not something that <laughs> you, you want to mess around with, and you know because we like to retain clients, not lose them. Uh, it was a worthwhile investment for us to be able to deliver those documents at zero cost to our clients. Yeah, 
I really enjoy, because this is definitely what we want to be about, is that combination of technology that makes things easier and more streamlined, and then an actual expert who is making sure that you are doing all the things that are going to keep you out of trouble, that are going to keep you compliant, make sure you even know about the things that are going to mm -hmm. do that, and then helping you create a strategy around doing them in a way that isn't sucking up your time and resources. I think that's Totally. I mean, that's why I think that Maxwell Agency and the crew are, are very similar. I mean, obviously we're in different verticals, but like our mentality is very similar. I mean, I, at least in the insurance space, there are, there's a lot of money in Silicon Valley really funneling into a lot of these tools and resources that we're talking about. But what they are fundamentally missing is that although they have great bells and whistles that we do too, they're missing the people aspect of it. I mean, they, it, I've sat through numerous meetings with these, you know, giant Silicon Valley uh, tech startups that everything looks great but the problem is when you actually start speaking to the advisor on the other end of the phone it's a 23 year old college kid that can barely spell insurance and you know he or she just doesn't quite have the depth of knowledge to really provide a lot of value and that's where I think a model like Maxwell Agency or even a crew is great because you're getting the same valuable tools and resources that you know you should expect but backed by you know a decade plus worth of uh, experience in the field. Well, and I think also backed by uh, a team of people who actually wants you to be successful, who actually sort of cares about whether your business is doing well and whether your needs are being met, whether, you know, you're staying in compliant, whether your employees are getting what they need, like who's actually invested in, in you being successful. I think that's uh, um, unique, uh, which it shouldn't be, but it, it's nice to have that. Um, yeah. Are there any other issues that you see run into a lot with business owners in terms of their benefits? All I mean, we talked time. about a lot of issues. Yeah, I mean, you would, I mean, so we talk to employers daily. I mean, that's one of those things that like I really love about our business is that insurance is insurance, which we talked about, but small business owners are, are awesome. And we all have different pain points and issues going on in our businesses. So specifically surrounding the benefits, you know, I, I meet employers every day that are just, you know, they're working um, with advisors that are, are not leveraging technology to streamline a lot of these things. And I hear common complaints about, you know, I told my broker to terminate this employee and three months later, he or she is still on the invoice. Or I sent an application in six months ago and the guy never got on there. And all of these things are, they're simple things that I'm sure that their current advisor is a good person, but they're falling through the cracks only because they're not leveraging technology resources like we're talking about that would eliminate 99% of the, the chance of those errors happening. And so, you know, employers, they have a lot going on. And when, uh, you know, when, when they're dealing with these issues that they're paying somebody else to deal with already, it's, uh, it's frustrating. Yeah, I'll say I've definitely seen those and gone, mm -hmm. Hey guys, didn't you guys let that person go? They're yeah. You're like, still hey, on the bill. Still though. Here. Um, yeah. I'm like, I don't want to be catching that stuff. So, totally. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's a big thing. And, you know, in addition to that, I, I think that in Southern California, at least um, having a broker that has a bilingual staff is vitally important as well. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to provide value, like I've talked about here a few times to employers, but we're also trying to provide value directly to employees. And it's kind of hard to provide value to that employee if um, if you're working with a hundred man machine shop where you know, the primary language in the shop is Spanish. It's kind of hard to do that if you have no one that can help explain the benefits to them. So. That is such a good point. I think, um, I mean, ultimately you are offering benefits as a way to, you know, ensure that your employees needs are met and everything about that process is a reflection of your company. So from the way that you do it, from the how straightforward it is versus how frustrating it is, versus whether someone actually understands it because someone is speaking in a language that they, you know, can better understand because benefits with, yeah. are complicated. So it's hard to, mm -hmm. it's hard to understand in English if English is your first language. Uh, so I think all of those things really taking into account that like this is a reflection of that business to their employees. And so how you come alongside and support that business to reflect them well, uh, I, I just love it. Um, 
So for the systems that you guys do use, is there mm -hmm. a single sign-on for employees? Do they have different logins for different systems? How does that um, technology kind of function? Yeah, so I mean, obviously these days, um, as far as a single sign-on is concerned, so how the process typically works, let's just start there. Is that So let's just say you were using the onboarding functionality and the benefits enrollment functionality. Um, you would send an offer letter if you wanted to out of the system, at which point then the employee would accept or reject the offer. If they were to accept the offer, it would take them to a sign-on link, in which case it would ask them to generate a, a password essentially um, from that point. It's a dual, it uses a, like a dual factor authentication for all enrollment for security purposes. So typically that's like a cell phone or an email as far as uh, generating a code just to make sure that uh, you know, we're not losing data. Obviously we carry uh, plenty of cyber insurance and we are very, very concerned with cyber liability and exposing, exposing our clients data. So it's something that um, we take maximum precautions to make sure that that's avoided. Knock on wood. And, uh, <laughs> you know, um, as far as um, different integrations within the system, what we've actually done is depending on the vendor or what, what specific system we're talking about, we will link all the different programs within our online system. So that way the employers or the employee have a single location where if they wanna log into the learning management system, we'll hyperlink it within that system. If we're logging into some of the HR components, we have a single sign-on API for those, um, those components that is all within that same system. So it, to answer your question, it depends on, we'd have to go through each of the services. We, some of them are fully integrated within single sign-on API, others are just hyperlinked back and forth. But we're working on it. It's definitely something that's at the top of mind as far as making them integrated, um, because obviously that's the uh, the dream scenario. But a lot of times, what happens is that we hear needs from our clients. We go out and scour the marketplace for a best in class solution to deliver them at zero cost. We get that solution, which is awesome. But it also means that now we have to start working on the back end a little bit more to figure out a way to integrate it back with our our Ben Admin system. So. Totally. Hopefully that answers. Yeah, yeah. I think the dream is always single sign-on so that your employees don't have twelve different logins for that's the dream. Systems. That's the that's the dream that's right the there. Dream. And I think <laughs> that's that's the dream. And I think that's why with us hiring a director of technology position, that has helped for those systems that are not fully integrated yet, because at least there's somebody quarterbacking it behind the scenes that that mm -hmm. understands how all the pieces go together rather than us just saying, hey, Anna, I got all these great things. I got an onboarding system, a benefits enrollment system, a learning management system, and I just throw it all at you and expect you to figure it out. You're not going to use any of it. No, but sir. if you have somebody, yeah, if you have somebody to like kind of be the quarterback and yeah, that IT person, for lack of a better term, on standby, uh, there's a better chance that you're going to you're going to use the tool or resource to the you know, best ability you want to, I guess. Totally. And then with that, does the like onboarding system actually sync over to payroll or does yeah, it depend so on which payroll? Totally, de totally depends on which payroll. Um, so, I mean, the payroll game is it's crazy. It's changing very, very quickly right now. Um, so we are working on new integration daily with payroll vendors. Um, I was actually just talking to one um, yesterday called uh, the Paylocity or mm -hmm. Pay one, one of them yep. um, that was it just finally up an EDI feed with our Ben Admin system. So it's something that is changing daily. I think from a benefits perspective or benefits brokers perspective, our goal is to make things as simple for our clients as humanly possible. And what I mean by that is that if you're a client that is in love with your payroll vendor and for some reason we don't have an API connection up and running with them, what we, I mean, we, they can add our account managers as one of their team members, or if they have a, you know, benefits person in house, we can communicate with them. So we're a very flexible organization. We have about, I'd say about 30% of our clients at this point are fully integrated with payroll 360. I would say another 30% of them are some kind of a hybrid model where, you know, I mean, like the employer is not having duplicate entry for any, for any, you know, any meaning, like they're not actually entering the, the deductions, but we are helping them on the back end. Um, and then, you know, the remainder are legacy based. A lot of times they have somebody in house that that's their job. So if we stepped on their toes, they probably wouldn't like it very much. Um, even if it would save them money. So, um, yeah, kind of all across the board there. What I love in that is that you guys are flexible. So that's totally basically flexible. what I am hearing from that is like, okay, what's the current systems you guys are using? We're not coming in and trying to flip the table and upend all the things that you're already doing. 
how can we take some solutions we have that we think will really help and streamline things and then make it work with what you're already doing rather than just come in and be like, you're doing it all wrong. Yeah, well, in that, in a lot of time, quite frankly, it's an incremental approach. I mean, we have a lot of clients that, especially right now in COVID, I think what, what a lot of employers are dealing with is that I have 50 employees. Um, I sure as heck don't want to get them all together for an open enrollment, but I know if we do a passive open enrollment where we don't actually hold an open enrollment at all, that's not a good thing either. And so a lot of our conversations with prospects these days is that around these technology solutions and showing them ways that, hey, you can still hold open enrollment meetings that are meaningful to your staff and educational to your staff without bringing everybody together. Um, and so we're seeing a lot, a lot of movement around, um, you know, that being is kind of the impetus to the change. Yeah, well, and you mentioned uh, offline that you guys are even kind of helping to facilitate that by even sending physical devices to mm -hmm. help with that. Well, I mean, well, yeah, well, I mean, think about it. So, I mean, if you if you're a, a manufacturer and you have 100 employees, um, you know, all this talk about technology is going to put you to sleep. And you're like, yeah, I have 100 employees. I have 80 guys in the shop. Majority of them are bilingual in some manner. Um, yeah, technology is good and all, but there's only 20 employees that have an email address. Well, what we've actually found and what we've been able to do to, to serve that in population and be able to provide them with these technology resources that we educate our enrollment staff. And what we're doing these days is we're actually sending out Surface Pros, Microsoft Surface Pros to our groups. And for open enrollment during COVID where they don't really necessarily want to, everybody together and they don't want us there, we still wanna make sure we deliver that return on investment to the employee and make sure that they still receive the education or like the explanation of the plans. And so we send out Surface Pros to them. And so now what's happening is that a lot of times the HR department within the company, they'll schedule 15 minute increments with the employees. We'll send out, you know, two, three, four of these Surface Pros to them. And essentially, instead of us, work, you know, meeting in the same room, we're meeting just like this. And so essentially what happens is, is that we go through your benefits. When it comes time for signature, we'll remote in and you can sign right there on the tablet and you're done. Because at the end of the day, the whole, the organizational aspect of technology is nice, but really for at least like a manufacturing type industry, it's about efficiency. And if we can take a 15 minute per employee enrollment time and cut that down to seven and a half because we're leveraging technology, that's great for everybody. Um, and uh, that's one of the ways we've found that we're able to, to do it even in the world of COBRA or COVID, sorry. <laughs> That is so awesome. I, anytime I talk to business owners whose focus is on serving their clients, serving them well, meeting them where they're at and offering them solutions, but not creating expectations that are unreasonable. We want to offer you technology. And if you don't have the physical device that will facilitate that, we'll send that to you too. How can we make this easy for you? Because we exist to serve you. We that's want it. to make sure your needs are met. Um, that's so that's, the goal. I love it. I love it so much. Every time I talk to you, I feel like I learned something new and I get excited about benefits, which is a very weird feeling. So oh, stop. Can we talk about Slack or, you know, Zaps <laughs> or anything like that next? Some really, really exciting stuff because we can really get some cool automations going. Oh God, we are going to have to schedule a follow-up to just geek out about tech because yeah, oh I gosh. am so super down um <laughs> but you can see me in zapier it's crazy i can get those zaps firing like crazy it's great don't get me started on zapier because this this workshop will never end and we'll <laughs> spend the rest of the day doing this um thank you again for uh for coming to share with us uh and if you guys are interested in connecting with blake uh we are going to queue up his contact information um, it will also go out in the follow-up email if you guys um, happen to be visiting live and we will uh, share that on YouTube. For November and December, we are going to just host one workshop for months, um, per month so that you guys have time for um, spending time with family uh, and doing other holiday activities. Our next workshop will be on November 5th and we will be talking about strategic recruiting during COVID. So we hope you can join us. Thanks again, Blake. Anytime guys, look forward to chatting next time.